Tonight, I have an amazing guest that's going to come in here in just a moment. He's in a mighty evangelist. His name is Evangelist Joe Turnbull. He has uh, been running for the Lord in a mighty, powerful way. He actually... Um, from what I remember, he was. I seen him in the WalMarts. I seen him in the streets. I seen him go to Chop, where uh, when when all the crazy riots was going on, he went right into the front lines. And now I see him doing mass crusades in in Africa, see, just commanding demons to come out in massive gatherings. God, we have an amazing guest tonight to talk to us about. Uh, to talk to us about boldness and what it means to be bold for Christ. I'm going to go ahead and invite him in. Uh, Brother Joe, I want you to come in and just pray real quick, and then we'll transition and uh, talk a little bit more about your story. Go ahead, brother. I'll let you just dive right in. Hey, I just want to honor the Holy Spirit right now. And um, In the pre-video, he gave me a verse, and it says this. For though we walk in flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God. For pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity in the obedience of Christ. Mm. So I really believe that the Holy Spirit is here tonight to set the captive captives free from their mind, from their thoughts, from their fears, and to bring it captive to the obedience of Christ. So Lord, I pray tonight, God, that as we move forward, God, that we clear our minds, God, that we humble ourselves, God, to your word, to your thoughts, God, to what, to that impartation, God, that you want us to receive tonight, God, that we don't think that we're already bold, God, but that we desire more boldness, God. I just pray for humility, God, across this channel, God, in every state, every country that's watching, God, Lord, that a hunger, God, begins to manifest, God, a deep supernatural hunger in the mighty name of Jesus, God, for your word, for breakthrough, God. I pray that as testimonies are released, God, that it says in your word, like that your testimonies, God, your testimonies, God, will be repeated, God, that there will be a, a repetition, God, that there'll be a breakthrough, God, that there be a ripple effect, God, Lord, that cities, God, strongholds just not in minds but strongholds and mm. cities are about to come down god come because on. you're gonna birth visions god i, I really feel like god is gonna wow. birth visions over cities tonight and god is gonna give you the key and um i just see a key right now and god is gonna give you the key to open up your city and that the strongholds are gonna go down he's gonna not only give you vision he's gonna give you method strategy mm. And he's going to give you the people to partner with. Come on. So just in this next week, I see people, I see hands locking. I have a vision of just hands locking. And I believe that people are going to be partnering and becoming unified in cities for the tearing down of strongholds in cities. And I really bring, I really believe that there's going to be clarity in the air over cities. And what that means is that the gospel is going to be he heard clearly, God. And that his spirit, God, is going to be delivered in a supernatural way. God, I thank you for every dam that is going to be bursted open over the cities, God. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are about to pour in to every heart tonight and over every city, every region, God. And I thank you that it's time for the harvest, God. Thank you, Lord. Burn thank us tonight, God, for what burns you. Lord, we Lord. thank you, Jesus. We thank you right now, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, man. Come on, yeah. brother. That's that was uh that word you just spoke just now. Uh brother, that's exactly I believe that was for me. I, I mean, I'm taking it for me. <laughs> I'm believing oh, yeah. for the Lord to do get download strategies and vision for Dallas Fort Worth, man. And and so that was just I receive that word. I don't know if you guys want to receive it, but I'm going to take it. <laughs> yeah, amen. I'm taking it. <laughs> <laughs> amen, yeah. bro. Well, man, I first of all, I just want to honor you and thank you for coming on, man. Thank you for accepting the invitation to come on. Thank you for uh, coming on to share about boldness and share about your story. Uh, Joe, just so that the people know about you, man, share a little bit about yourself, a little bit about your story. <laughs> Yeah, man. So I'm excited to be here. Um, as soon as I hopped on before and we were going through audio checks, I really just felt the presence of the Lord. And the biggest thing I noticed when the presence there is the freedom inside of my heart, inside of my mm -hmm. spirit. I don't feel constricted. So I just want to thank you for just hosting and just having a great platform just of just that freedom just to release and 
you know, I already feel a connection and, you know, we talked about some things and I really believe God's going to move forward um, with it all. But my name is Evangelist Joe Turnbull. Mm-hmm. Um, I was only recently saved about seven and a half years ago. So I'm kind Come of on. fresh, fresh off the block, fresh off the fish. <laughs> and uh, I actually got saved at a Reinhardt Bunky Crusade in Orlando, Florida, when he did the America Shall Be Saved tour. Get out, so, dude. I love the video that you had in the beginning because that burns in my heart. So I mm-hmm. gave my life to the Lord there. I got mm-hmm. delivered, set free of drugs, alcohol. I was an IV drug user for years. And then I got filled with the Holy Ghost. And then I went to Bible college for four years. Um, God's blessed me tremendously. I'm married. I got two children. Mm. Uh, Then I went to Christ for All Nations Evangelism Boot Camp, where I graduated from. And ever since then, it was kind of full circle for me, you know, being saved at the Reinhardt Bunky Crusade and then coming back and being trained by evangelist Daniel Kalinda, the same guy who led me to Jesus. Wow. And um, he's such a, I I honor him right now. Yeah, it's wild. I honor him right now. And he's such a father, father in the faith and just has a true heart to see multiplication and raising up young evangelists like me. And ever since I went to that school, you know, I thought, I thought I was bold. I thought I had faith, you know, I thought I was like, you know, going to take on the world and just had, you know, everything. (laughs) And I had knowledge and, you know, I had zeal and, I just needed an open door, but as soon as I arrived there and, you know, as soon as I saw what was around me, I knew that, you know, I just really had to humble myself, you know, under Mm -hmm. these men of God and just the humility that they walk in, the excellence they walk in Mm -hmm. and just the tenacity, you know, that these people just walk with a a fire of tenacity Mm -hmm. and, you know, they're on a moving train. And what it is, man, is what I've realized and you as a revivalist know this is that, Mm -hmm. you know, there's a river. Mm. And there's always been a river, Mm -hmm. you know, a river of revival has always been flowing over the cover of the earth. And I wasn't even planning on talking about this, but go ahead, brother. I didn't notice this river until I was in boot camp. And I actually, Mm. I got to go on a trip with evangelist Daniel Kalinda. I, I traveled with him down to Claudio Frazon. He's in Buenos Aires, Mm. Argentina, Mm. and he's got like the largest church there. And just hearing the history behind it and being able to sit down with this man, it was me, him, it was Todd White. It was just these, these fathers of the faith. And you're, I'm like sitting there, I'm like, I can't believe I'm sitting here for one. And um, Claudio Frazon just tells me how he started a revival in Buenos Aires. He was in the park praying for people and he, they were seeing gold teeth appear. Come this, on. Guy didn't even, this guy didn't even have a degree. He didn't even have like a ministerial background. And then he went to go to the clergy to get ordained so he could start his church because all these people were following him and they wouldn't ordain him. They wouldn't. No, yeah. They wouldn't ordain him, you know, because he's seeing the power of God. And, you know, so he just starts his church on his own. And no lie, like he's got five services on Sunday and they are packed lined up throughout the door and then you hear about like guys like evangelist steve hill that went down there yep. you know hung out with you know carlos anaconda you know the mighty master deliverer mm-hmm. you know where demons just tremble and you know then steve hill comes back hangs out with you know he's with leonard ravenhill and then he goes to the browns roll revival and you just see this thing spread off and i mean this thing goes way back even before this but i just my, my mind my eyes saw that there was this river and either I was going to jump in and I was going to go for it and I was going to pay the cost mm-hmm. or I was just going to sit back and just, you know, do my good deeds and like, you know, do some of the will of God. And he blesses that. He's, you know, and he's so good. You know, he's so good to people and so merciful. You know, if, if you're only 20 percent and he's going to use what he's got because that's how much yeah. he loves you. And he really does love everyone. But just like. You know, Ezekiel talks about just being in, you know, ankle deep, knee deep, waist deep. And then, you know, you're swimming in the river. So I I even believe tonight that people are going to be jumping in the river just by hearing his testimonies, because all it takes is a step. You don't have to go to a class. You don't have to get around big men of God. You know, you don't have to do that. I mean, it's great to learn. It's great to do things. But, you know, there's people that have sprouted up, you know, out of nothing, because wherever somebody's hungry and wherever somebody's believe, God springs up a well. Yeah, come on, dude. Yeah, come so, on, man, dude, that's yeah. awesome. <laughs> that's a great yeah. um, sidebar. I've only been saved about eight years. I'm about to hit. Okay, this October is going to be my nine years. So I'm with you, man. We're fresh yeah. meat. We're only yeah, yeah, nine. Yeah. I'm nine years old. You know, nine years old. You're seven years old. You know, we're still toddlers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> Still kids figuring it out in the kingdom, man. That's awesome, bro. Yeah, that's awesome, man. So, uh, yeah, I've actually studied uh, um, the Argentine revival and Steve Hill. My mentor was actually mentored by Raven Hill for 15 years. Because they're and, down from Texas. They all live yep, in Texas. Yep. Yeah, yeah, East yeah. Texas. Yeah. Yep. yep. And uh, Steve Hill actually came out of my mentor's uh, Sunday school. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> so it's crazy history there and just yeah, kind of yeah, how yeah. They were connected that. But that's awesome, man. So talk to us about like, uh, I guess, tell us a little bit about, you, you know, some your journey from getting radically saved at the crusade yeah. to, you know, I know that there's been this progression in the way that the Lord's just increased you in favor and the doors yeah. that have opened in for you. But there was things happening, you know, when no one was looking, there's things that you were sure. doing out in the streets, not no, no camera, no, no, nobody to see. Talk to us about this journey of you growing from radically saved to bold, radical evangelists. And how did that yeah. happen? Yeah. Amen. So when I first got saved, you know, thank God. Um, I had a good friend and he stuck with me side by side and it was beautiful. But, you know, there was one day when I went to the church and some guy um, named Marcus asked me if there, you know, if I wanted everything God had to offer. And I said, absolutely. And in that moment, you know, he prayed for me and some people came over and laid hands on me. And that's when I saw fire from heaven come down and just mm -hmm. hit me. Mm -hmm. I saw demons fly off of me. You know, I, ha I had an encounter. You know, and that to me is like the first step of like boldness is like having that encounter. Like you need to encounter Jesus. You know, it's just like Paul on the road to Damascus, you know, before he, you know, got bold for his faith because he's one of the boldest of them all. Um, you know, he had to have, have an encounter with Jesus. He had to get hit off his high horse, you know, and that's what happened to me is that I had to get hit off my high horse. I had to be humbled, you know, and I got filled with the Holy Ghost. And then right in that moment, I knew God was real. I had an experience. I had an encounter. Then I got filled with the spirit. I had an experience. And anybody who's ever, ever had an experience with anything in life that's been like amazing, you know, like you've been to the best rest, that new restaurant town you went there, you had the best steak of your life. Come on. You know, you go to Steak and Shake, you get that Nutella milkshake. You're like, man, this is fire, you know, <laughs> or you get, you know, your fresh pair of Jordans and you're like, man, this was awesome. Or you go skydiving like the, the week after you experience these things, the first thing you want to do is you want to share it because something affected you emotionally, something affected you inside, something stimulated your mind. You had this experience and that's what we call a testimony of something that happened in your life. So the moment that I got filled, I just had this boldness coming with me because that's where boldness comes from is being filled by the Holy Spirit. Come See, on. I wasn't bold before. I mean, some people might be like, oh, people that are loud, they're naturally bold. That's not true. They're just they're just expressing their personality, God, that gave them, but give them something and put it in their heart that's going to make them feel uncomfortable and things that they have to say that are going to make them feel uncomfortable. That's mm -hmm. boldness. Naturally, some people are bold because they like certain topics. Mm -hmm. They that's like true. sports, so they're going to be bold about sports. You know, a girl likes dancing. She's going to be bold about dancing. You know, you talk about your favorite pop artist, your favorite rapper. You're like bold. You're going to be talking about those things because that's what burns in your heart. Well, until mm -hmm. Jesus Christ comes inside and burns your heart, you Come know, on. that's what creates the boldness for Jesus. You know, it's him filling you up, burning your heart and getting boldness. And then the third thing is, is this, is that you have to go pour out. Mm. That is the key to stewarding boldness and increasing in boldness. Some people naturally like, man, they're just bold. They come off the rip. But what I know about God is his faithfulness and you being a good steward of what he's given you. Come so on. you have to steward this, this, the amount of the spirit that he's poured into you and you have to go pour it out. Just like in Acts chapter two, what they do, they had, they all had an encounter with Jesus, the disciples, they were running, they were scared for their lives. They were in yeah. fear and they had to see Jesus again on the shore. They had to see Jesus again, walking down the road saying, you know, weren't our hearts not burning within us Come when on. we were with him. That's Come that on. burning that I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? It's like, wasn't that Jesus that was with me in the burning in my hearts? And then all of a sudden, Jesus said, wait, you need to go get the helper. 
Come on. They get they get birthed in the book of Acts. They get filled up. They get filled with the Holy Ghost. A lot of you guys know the story. It's the Glory Podcast. But those for those of you who don't, listen carefully. They had an encounter with Jesus again. Again, mm -hmm. many people have, have encountered Jesus before. You've been in Bible school. Your parents might have taken you to church. You might have mm -hmm. been in a prayer meeting. You might have had an emotional experience. You might have mm -hmm. had these things happen, you know, and you've had met Jesus in the past. But for some reason, you've been staggering. And when you're out in public, you find it hard mm -hmm. to say something. But when you're in your well, but when you're in your Bible studies or when you're in your glory groups, you know, or you're in your encounter groups, man, all you want to do is talk. All you want to do is talk. And I think the reason why people want to talk so much in these groups is because they're not talking outside of the groups. Mm. Come on. I'll, I'll let that sit in for one second. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. Man. It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. So it's it's having that encounter and then it's going and pouring out. Come the key on. is the pouring out part and the stewardship of that. And that's kind of what I want to talk about that progression, because in Acts chapter four, you know, they went back to the upper room and prayed for more boldness mm. because God gave them new tasks. They put them in dark places. They put them in environments. You know, they saw people get martyred. They saw people get killed. You know, they cut, they came against persecution, mm. you know, and uh, the biggest the biggest persecution that we come against, you know, in America isn't so much from the government or for people telling us we can't, but it's just from fear of man. Come on, bro. It's for it, it, it's it's thinking that things are so overwhelming that how could we possibly make a change because things are just so bad and we're mm. just praying and hoping for Jesus to come back, you know, and we're just hoping that somebody has a revival service and we get a tent going, you know, and only two lost people get saved, but everybody's falling on the ground. You know, in the book of Acts, everybody fell on the ground, but they went out of the building. Yeah, come on, man. <laughs> and that's where that boldness is. That was what I'm talking about. And that's what happened to me. I got filled. I got hit with the boldness. I went around. I started telling people in my life, like, what God did. I didn't know how to preach the gospel. I didn't go to Bible college. I was fresh off of it. But what did I have? I had the testimony in the blood of Jesus. We are that's more than overcomers by the power of our testimony and by the blood of Jesus. You got those two things. You're ready to go. Sometimes it's better when people only realize they have those two things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, I, I'm just want to bear witness with you because uh, same thing happened with me, right? October 7th, 2012. I had a supernatural encounter where the Lord appeared to me. Yeah. I get radically saved. The very, what was it? It was, a, that was on a Sunday. The very next day I go to school and I'm just talking to everybody about Jesus and I'm still cussing. I'm still like, yeah. man, it, it was effing unbelievable. You won't effing believe it. Like yeah, <laughs> Jesus yeah, yeah. showed up to me like, <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, what is wrong with this guy? <laughs> right. Yeah, and it's like, yeah. I had no way. I didn't know what I was supposed to do. I didn't know what I was supposed to say. All I knew is I've seen him. I've touched him. Yeah. I've experienced him. And that's what first John one says, right? This, which we've seen this, which we've touched this, which we've heard with our own ears and, 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 and walked with this, we testify to you. Right. And so, and then Isaiah, right. You see, you know, I saw the Lord high lifted up, right. And the train of the road filled the temple. And then he was like, Oh my gosh, woe is me for I'm undone. Yeah. And then out of that encounter came a, who will go for us. Yeah. Right. And, and and I tell people all the time, man, the secret to more encounters is what you do with the encounter. Yeah, amen. You get an encounter to become an encounter for everyone else. <laughs> yeah, yeah, amen. Right? That. No, that's Come good. On, man. Yeah, man. So, you know, going that, I just go around like you, just telling people about Jesus, telling them about things about this. But I had something very special in my heart mm. was my city. You know, I had a, I had a deep love for my city because – you know, I, I grew up in Florida and between like 2006 to 2010, we had one of the biggest oxy pandemics in the world for every one person in the United States, 11 people were being prescribed oxy in the state of Florida. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was the wild, wild west. I mean, you know, seven people were dying a day. I had numerous friends die. I've been to numerous funerals. You know, I got friends that are still locked up from it. I've been locked up twice, been to rehab twice, been to detox three times. You know, and it wasn't until I had that encounter that I got delivered and set free. So my city burned for my heart. And this is where it kind of gets into that territory thing, you know, is when I was talking about territorial spirits is that I wanted to take my city for Jesus. Mm. You know, and I prayed to God. I, I asked him, like, what to do, because I'm running around like a chicken with my head cut off, you know, like just telling people about Jesus, don't know what to do. 
don't have a strategy. You know, I'm upset with the church because they allowed this to happen and they had the power of God. And I realized like, you guys had the power of God and this went down. (laughs) I know, right? (laughs) And like, you know, you're just young. You're just like, you know, and then it's just like, you know, I got on my face and then, you know, I had a vision of my city, you know, and I had, you know, a pinpoint location where he said, this is where you're going to start. And I started downtown near the bars and near everything. And within six months, you know, I started off with one other friend. Within six months, we had about 40 to 50 people, you know, downtown, you know, spreading the gospel, you know, preaching the kingdom. I was going to every young adult group in the area. I was going to uh, multiple churches, you know, and I was just telling people, hey, you need to come out with me. You know, people are getting touched. People are getting saved. We'd be sharing testimonies, you know, Mm -hmm. people getting radically, you know, transformed. We had people walking out of bars. You know, we pull them in. We had this, thank God we had this little church downtown. We pull them into the church. You know, mm-hmm. we pray for the Holy Spirit. They would get delivered. They get set free. Mm-hmm. And it was just a really special time because we didn't know what we were doing and none of the people out there did. You know, we were going to the bad hotels that had the prostitutes. And then as soon as I stewarded that area, you know, we started a Bible study too out there, you know, just for follow up for discipleship because most mm-hmm. people wouldn't come to church, you know. Mm-hmm. And so we started that group and then you know, the team just started expanding because more and more people and, you know, that, you know, it was tough in the beginning because it was me and only one other person. We didn't have cameras. We didn't have social media. We didn't have anything like that. We weren't even thinking like that. I was just a young kid and my heart burned for the city. I mean, we got to the, we got to the place where Halloween, you know, I had this vision. I had this vision from God that we were going to do the crucifixion scene, you know, down main street because, Everybody was going to be dressed up. Everybody's going to be partying down there. It's not going to be obscene for a bunch of people to be dressed up, you know, in Jesus stuff and do a crucifixion scene. So I went to the theater department in my church and I was like, yo, I need some costumes. They're like, what are you going to do? I was like, this is what I'm going to do. They're like, you're absolutely crazy. I said, but it's going to be awesome. (laughs) And that night we had 80 people show up in the community. I was Jesus. We like had fake scars. There was blood coming down. We had real legit torches with real fire and like Roman guards. And we literally took like, you know, the play you ever see, you always see at Eastern churches. We literally took that play and I'm like carrying a cross. People are whipping me. The fire's coming out. You know, I get lifted up on the cross and no lie. It's, the moment I get lifted up on the cross, we didn't even have to ask the city if we could do this. So <laughs> what I say about boldness is just go for it and ask for permission later. You can you can take that to the bank. Yeah, and, come on. <laughs> and so they lift me up on the cross, and as they're lifting me up, the theater across the street, a play comes out, and like 200 people come out of the theater. It was like a live theater yeah. play. I'm like getting nailed up to the cross, and this whole group of people is coming to this live crucifixion. And we preached the gospel. People got saved. Then the police. Yeah, bro. It was awesome. Then the police came. They swarmed us, you know, and they're just like, what are you doing? I I went up there. I'm all bloody. I'm like, man, we're just preaching Jesus. This is what we're doing. They looked at me. They're like, how many more times are you going to do this? I said two more times. They said, go ahead. Come on. (laughs) In that moment, the Holy Spirit grabbed these officers, grabbed Mm. their minds, grabbed the moment, grabbed their hearts. And we just had complete favor because one thing about vision and seeing it over your city and stepping out into obedience is you're going to extreme, you're going to have extreme favor in your situation with different things, with different ideas. People are mm. going to come around. They're going to bring in finances. They're going to bring in, they're going to be bring in special talents. I mean, it's just going to be this amazing thing that happens, you know, when you get, you know, a vision for your city and you start to steward it by just going to the place God tells you to do, preaching, you know, being consistent. And that's the thing is being faithful. Mm. You know, God will bless you with just so much as long as you're faithful and he sees you stewarding what he's given you. Come on. And, uh, you know, and then from that, you know, from Friday nights, I started doing more outreaches, you know, and just started doing, you know, community outreaches, apartment outreaches, And then, you know, everybody told me like, hey, you know, they're not letting Jesus into the schools. And I said, you know, why are you saying that? Like, you know, that one thing that we have to have a mindset of is that when people tell us we can't, we -hmm. need to automatically think we can, especially if especially if it's an area like, oh, you can't preach there because, you know, this and that we have an automatic green light to go. And when you step out in that green light, God is looking for people like that to Mm -hmm. go where to go where people say you can't go. Come on, man. 
And when he sees that heart and when he sees you, he's going to fill you up more in this. You're going to get a greater increase and you're going to have greater favor because you steward this thing well. And you're not going in there with the approach of, you know, this is who I am. I'm bad. I'm going to get, you know, I'm going to do what I want. You go in there with this humble attitude because the Lord sent you just like Moses showed up to Egypt. You know, here I am, you know, let my people go. I don't know what I'm doing, God. You know, I can't even speak well, but I'm going to send an Aaron with you. He'll always send someone with you. I always had somebody right by my side and we went up into the schools. And next thing you know, we got hooked up with organizations. We were doing mm. outreaches in the schools with, you know, 100, 200, 300 kids, basketball wow. tournaments, preaching Jesus, seeing kids get saved every week. And people that just, you know, there was a group of people for two years in my church. They, they prayed for the schools and I'm glad they prayed. But the problem was they never stepped out. Come they just on. went to the schools and prayed, Yeah, you know, and that's, that's the thing is a lot of people are praying. A lot of people are encountering God that are getting filled with his presence, man. They're having sweet, sweet moments, but they're not going to pour out. Mm. Evangelist Ben Fitzgerald, who does awakening Europe. He said mm. this thing that if the private kiss doesn't turn into public affection, mm. who are you kissing? Mm. Come on, you know? And that's a powerful in, in its moment. And then I steward that. I, I was stewarding mm. that well. And God just, he, he saw my heart that I was just willing to go where I went. Mm. And, um, you know, then I got signed up with the boot camp and only 50 people were getting selected in the whole world. You know, and I'm thinking like, there's no way I'm getting in. I, fu <laughs> I filled it out in 10 minutes. I'm like, there's no way, you know, <laughs> next thing I get an email. Mm. Next thing I get a phone call. And in this phone call was very interesting because I only lived two hours from where it was. And they said, Hey, you're going to be able to travel. You know, you can just go there. It's only three days a week. I said, that's perfect. They give me a call back and they say, Hey, evangelist Daniel Clinda says that, you know, he wants families to move here. Mm. And I'm like thinking, man, how am I going to move there? I got a job. I got this, I got that. I need to have a place for six months. You know, I got my house here. I'm like thinking, how's all this going to happen? Mm. Man, as soon as I walked in the door, I told my wife, she just says, you need to go. Mm. And there's a key word when you when you hear that word, you need to go from God and then you solidify in your heart. We're not talking about like in James when it says you waver yeah. back and forth and you're a double minded man. And you're like, what if this? What if that? You yeah. know, and you're listing up pros and cons. You know, that's the worst thing you could ever do is pros and cons. The Holy Spirit doesn't do pros and cons. He just gives you a clear answer. And he said to go. The next, the next day I get a phone call. I reached out to my buddy asking him if he had any rental properties in Orlando. He called me right away. He gave me a house to stay in for free for six months wow. in Orlando. And that was the favor of Christ, you know, all my life. Then I mm. show up to boot camp, you know, and then COVID happened. Mm. I'm in the middle of this boot camp. I just, you know, I'm paying for tuition. I just moved my whole family. And then COVID is shutting everything down. Mm. I'm like, what in the world? You know, you feel that constriction. Everybody's felt it, you know, in this mm -hmm. past year and a half. They they felt constriction, mm -hmm. you know. And one thing about constriction is the Holy Spirit does not like to be constricted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you have him, yeah. he does not like to be constricted. Mm -hmm. And the problem is, is when we don't listen to him, you know, for avenues of freedom, to for him to get let loose, that's what we call the infamous quenching the Holy Spirit. Yep. People think quenching the Holy Spirit is like, oh, you go to a Catholic church, they're quenching the Holy Spirit. You know, you go to, you know, you go to a Baptist, they're quenching the Holy Spirit. They put it with a denomination, but there's a lot of charismatic. There's a lot of Pentecostals that when they're out, God's tugging on their heart or God's telling them to step out. They're telling them to go into the mission field. They're telling them to go for it. They're telling them to, you know, hey, man, I, you know, I really think you should pass the Holy Spirit saying pastor a church, lead a small group, you know, do a podcast. You know, let me out, let me loose, let me loose. And the moment that you don't listen to that, you're quenching the Holy Spirit. Wow. And you're and then people are thinking like, man, why am I not? Why am I not experiencing God like I did, like I used to when I had that amazing counter man and he wrecked my life and he touched me? You know, like, why am I not experiencing that? It's because you're not taking new ground. You're not taking new territory. You're not Come stepping on. out. Mm. You're constricting the Holy Spirit and you're quenching the Holy Spirit. You mm. know, and I know that you've you've probably felt that in your life. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, you know, what I've always tell people is the Holy Spirit's called the comforter because he needs to comfort you. Yeah. But if he doesn't have to comfort you, then 
you must be then, then he has nothing to do. Right. So if you're right. in if you put yourself in too many comfortable situations, he has nothing to do. But it's the moment that it's an uncomfortable thing. It's the moment when you have to step out. I mean, as bold as you are, Joe, I'm sure. And I, and I think this is good for people to hear yeah. when there's a moment where like the Holy Spirit wants you to do something pretty radical, like, I don't know, like sim- simple, but still seems radical to many. Right. Jump on a table and just start preaching inside of a of a, of a food store. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like yeah. there's still that there's always that little nervous feeling that still always. comes on you. Right. Always. always. Because because the flesh hates it. Yeah. The flesh hates for us to be bold and loud for Jesus. Mm-hmm. Surprisingly enough, though, go down to the club, go look at some people who are drunk. And I guarantee you, they're bold as lions. Yeah. <laughs> right. Because the flesh it's, likes it. Oh, the flesh loves it. Right. But yeah. here's what I've learned. When you get drunk in the Holy Spirit, you become extremely bold. Yeah. <laughs> you don't even care anymore. Right. Yeah. Because and, and, and when you do step out, the Holy Spirit honors that. And he comes to be a comforter in that uncomfortable situation. Amen. You know, the. Yeah. And you got to and you got to remember those times where you did quench the Holy Spirit and what you felt after that. You know, there was a time like, you know, probably a year and a half after I got saved, I'm seeing people get saved in the streets, CPC and people get saved in the bars, you know, and unfortunately I worked at a job and my boss, he got in a plane accident. He was 40 years old, mm-hmm. had two kids, you know, he passed away, he died, he left a wife and two children. Oh, okay. No one knew Jesus. His his mother was a Mormon. You know, I go to the funeral and this guy like really, you know, brought me on. I mean, I got a new job as soon as I got saved and he was like, you know, a mentor type to me. Mm-hmm. And thank God a month before, you know, I shared Jesus with him in the van and, you know, he accepted God. But I was wow. at his funeral and there was like, man, I'm telling you, this guy was very well known in the town. Very, you know, just people loved him. Mm-hmm. And there was there was thousands. There was a lot of people there. Wow. And you know, the, the, re- the guy who goes up there, who's the director of the funeral home says, Hey, we're going to put our heads down for a moment of silence, you know, and then we're going to open the mic. And if anybody's has anything to say, you know, I want you to say it. And all of a mm. sudden I start feeling my heart burn, flicker, mm. flicker, 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 flicker. Yeah, just, 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 a couple of people yeah. come up there. They say some funny jokes. Some people go up there, they cry and I'm flicker and flicker and flicker. And, and I just kept my head down, man. And, you know, I wish I could say I got up there and preached and, you know, shared about that story about letting, leading him to Jesus a month ago and, you know, praying for the family. But I froze. Mm-hmm. I froze because there was just so many people in the room that weren't, you know, they weren't the drug addict. They weren't, you know, yeah. they weren't, you know, they weren't the easy homeless person who pray for on the street. You know, these mm-hmm. were businessmen that made money that were influential, you know, that, you know, and, and, you know, I froze and then I left that night and I just felt shame. The devil brought shame, guilt on me, you know, and all this stuff. And like, you know, I did, I just didn't feel like close to God. And I felt like, you know, because I quenched the spirit in that moment, mm. you know, I just felt a deep pain. Like I felt like the pain of God, you know, like he was hurt, mm. you know, because he saw all those hearts in there and he saw that I was stewarding this thing well. And he's like, giving me this moment. Mm. You know, and I don't seize the moment, you mm. know, I'm not in obedience. And then I leave and I was wrecked for like a week, you oh, know, I was man. beating myself up and, you know, thank God, you know, for his grace, for his favor, for his forgiveness, and most of all, for his mercy, Right. you know, I was able to walk away from that, but I'll never forget that. And yeah. I, and I told myself after that, like, I'm going to do it. Like I mm. have to do it. I don't want to feel like that again. And there's been a few times here and there where, you know, I've been busy in life and I feel it and I walk away and I'm just like, dang, I missed it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I know that. But, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. But you know, like that, that deep agony, like I'll, I'll never forget that. And I'll let it, I'll let it always be with me because we learn from failure, you know, mm-hmm. and we learn, you know, from God, you know, in our mistakes, mm-hmm. you know, and you know, after that, he'll give you another test. Mm-hmm. He'll give you, he'll give you another test. He'll give you another trial to say like, you know, who are you? Who is, who is this kid? You know, like, are you really, are you, would you really say, you know, do you really say you want to be like me when people say to Jesus, I want to be like you, you know, mm-hmm. God, make me more bold, you know, God, I want to be used by you. Well, let me tell you something that week he is going to bring a test. Oh yeah. Because God isn't looking for lip service. He's looking for action. Come on. He's looking for people that will do what they're calling, saying that they're do. 
And listen, I've been to many different places where we're getting that more, but it, there, there's always more. Mm. And that's the greatness of this walk is that there's always more. There's more boldness. Mm. There's more, there's more, there's more depth. You know, mm. just because you've experienced, you might have gone to the third heaven like Paul. You might have sitting on the mountaintop. You might have seen Jesus face to face. And you might think like, man, I, I'm spiritual. Right. <laughs> I'm strong. Look, if you get like you just said, if you get if you're not getting put in places of uncomfort, one, mm. it's because you have a lot of pride. And two is mm -hmm. because you're not stepping out as far as you think you should. That's right. And you're stagnant. You're, you're, you're right. bold. You're bold in every area except for where God wants you to be. Mm. That's man, good that's, stuff, man. Yeah, yeah, that was a good one. <laughs> that, that, can, that convicts me. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, I get, I get convicted by that. Yeah, man. You know? Mm. I know a lot of people like that. They're bold every, you know, they're bold in certain areas, certain places, certain groups around certain people. But man, you put them, you put them in a place of uncomfort, like you're saying, or, you, or God puts them in a situation where it's like, Hey, are you going to rise to the table? You know, but the greatest thing is, is when you do, he'll bless you. Oh, man. He brings favor on your life. You know, yeah. like, like I said, we were in the class, COVID broke out. You know, they put us on online school, you know, because the, the government was cracking down hard. You know, we had a lot of people from overseas. They weren't really used to, you know, they're really used to just being uh, just being puppets like of the government, you know, European culture, Australian culture. I've been around in different cultures and yeah. like they, they they really honor the government, which is a great thing, you know. But when it goes against the word of God, it's not, you know, we had some right. people in our group that were really complaining, really being like, hey, we need to listen. You know, and it would only took a it would only took one person complaining to like really cause a problem. Right. So we had to take two weeks off, you know, and then a third week, and I'm sitting here, I'm like, this is crazy. And mm -hmm. you know, Minister Eric Gilmore, he did our morning sessions, you know, about mm -hmm. intimacy. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just like, man, I gotta get on my face. Mm -hmm. I gotta pray to God. Mm -hmm. You know, I need something. He needs to do something because if I don't do something, like I'm gonna go crazy. <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm gonna go crazy. God, you need to show me what to do. And that's where we need to get to is like when we get in a crisis mode, we need to be thinking, God, what do I do? Mm -hmm. You know, because if we know that Jesus is the answer, we need to figure out what the crisis is and we need to go. We need to go forth through it. Come on. And I'm like thinking in my head, I'm like, am I ever going to preach at a crusade? Like, that's been my dream. Yeah. You know, like mass crusades. Yeah. We're going there for mass crusades and like everybody's going into isolation. I'm like, what is happening? I know. You know, I'm like, what is going on? This is not a funny joke, God. This is not funny. You know, like we're isolating yeah. everyone. And I'm supposed to be doing mass crusades. Like what is happening? Yeah. <laughs> and so I get on my face and like I have a vision of people standing out in Walmart checkout lines. This wasn't like something that I thought was cool, shock and awe. I'm going to come up with this scheme. Like I would never do anything like this. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I'm more of like that relational, like. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to say hi to you. Like, I like doing bold things, but not like until God tells me to, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So I call up two of my friends. I'm like, look, I got this vision. We go to Walmart and I'm like, you know, this is where all the people are. There's like mm -hmm. mad people in Walmart. There's like hundreds of people lined up, you know? Mm -hmm. And we mm -hmm. preach the gospel in the place erupts. Because mm -hmm. you got to think no one's been in church for like two or three weeks. You know, everyone's like scared for their life. They're stuck in fear. And the only Come thing on. I know that gets away fear is the gospel. Come on, man. So we preach the gospel and like, thank God we had, we had these senoritas, like these, these, these Spanish ladies in the checkout line and they're just all going, ah, you know, they're going crazy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, the place yeah. erupts, you know, we walk out and this lady comes up to me and she runs and she chases us in the parking lot. And she looks at, she can't speak English. She breaks out her phone and the translator and she goes, da, 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 you know? And then she goes like this. And the question on the phone was, are you guys baptized in the Holy Spirit? Uh, come on. <laughs> that and is people awesome. are like, how do you become bold? Like you have to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. You have to be filled with the Holy Ghost. This come lady on. had the Holy Spirit in her and she witnessed what it was. Just like, you know, um, in the Old Testament, you know, when the anointing came, it was on the priest. It was on the king's. You know, it was a uh, theocratic anointing, you know what I'm saying, where it was just structured and like, you know, every king had to be anointed, priest had to be anointed. And, you know, that anointing, that mantle stayed on people. But then like when, you know, the kingdom ended, you know, in northern Israel got conquered, you know, they went into darkness for 400 years, yeah. 400 years. They went to darkness. Holy Spirit, nowhere. 
But who rolls up on the scene is Jesus in the stomach of Mary. And she walks into uh, Mary, you know, the cousin's house. John's yeah. in the other belly. And that's the <laughs> Holy Spirit is erupting inside of their bellies. Mm. Because the Holy Spirit is witnessing the Holy Spirit. This mm. lady's spirit inside of her was witnessing the spirit inside of us in Walmart. That's mm. when you know you're flowing in the anointing is when mm. people around you that are filled with the spirit don't mm. even have to, you don't have to tell them, you don't have to say anything, but they sense a releasing in the atmosphere. They sense mm. an explosion. And that Come explosion on. comes from a vision, walking out in obedience. You know, it's like an abundance. You know, like you can be bold in certain things and God has a little splash, a little splash here. But let me tell you, when the motive lines up with God, he gives you the motive. When he gives you the method, when he gives you the place, when those mm -hmm. three three things line up, there's just this special explosion. And there was an explosion in that place. Next mm -hmm. thing you know, we posted the video online. You saw it. There yeah. was over like 160,000 views in like two weeks. Mm -hmm. I had people messaging me from different parts of the country going into Walmart preaching the gospel. Come on, bro. And I'm just like, yo, this is crazy. So we yeah. go around, we're preaching everywhere. You know, we didn't stop till COVID was over. Yeah. We went everywhere. We went to grocery stores. I just want to I just want you to know yeah. uh yeah. when when you did that open air preach in the Walmart, I was like, yeah. dude, that's a great idea. So I actually <laughs> went and did it too. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. So you actually inspired me to just do that in a Walmart like that. And it, and it's God. <laughs> and you know who noticed it was Evangelist Daniel Kalinda. Mm. He was so happy because there was a lot of people complaining, sitting at home, you know, why are we doing this? And he's just like, look, you know, this is what you need guys to be doing. And the rest of the boot camp exploded after that. Come on. You know, like everybody went out full gun ho and everybody was lighting up the area. And it really just, I, you know, God will highlight you, I'm not saying like he'll show you favor when you step out in obedience, you know. Mm -hmm. So then I got to actually meet with Daniel and talk to him and just share my heart with him. You know, and, and build that relationship and building that relationship, you know, led to an internship with the crusades that they do in Africa. Come on, and here's another thing where it's like I'm sitting in the room. I hear God talking to my heart. Go, go, go. This is a six week trip. I'm married. I got two kids. I don't know. You know, like this is crazy. You know, I go home. I tell my wife about it. She hears the same thing. That witness. She says, you know, you need to go. Next thing you know, they call me back. They're like, we need you to leave in like three weeks. Well, you're going to be gone, you know, for a month. You're going to come home for a week, be gone for a month, go home for a week. And we're just like, hey, you got to count the cost. There's a cost to the anointing. There's a yeah. cost to revival. There's a cost oh. to the Holy Spirit. You know, there's a cost for this thing. And if you're not willing to pay the cost, mm. you're not going to you're not going to get to that to that. I don't even know if you call it next level. I, you know, I, I, that terminology kind of, it's, it's hard for me sometimes, but like, you're not going to go as far as, as Jesus went, you know, mm -hmm. as far as your calling is, because everyone has a calling. Everyone has a purpose. You might not be called to preach in crusades in Africa or preach in front of Walmarts. You might be called to start a women's group, to start mm -hmm. a Bible study for moms, you know, people mm -hmm. that are in your neighborhood that are suffering, you know, that are, 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 it's a hard time to raise their children. You know, your boldness might step up and might be that breakthrough in that neighborhood. You know, there's so many different things, so many different boldness. And when you step in the fullness of your calling, man, you have that 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 peace, that anointing that comes and it grows and God will give you more strategy. And so I go to this Africa trip. I'm gone, you know, for three yeah. months. You know, I only get to see my family for a little bit. But next thing you know, I'm getting the mic handed to me by Evangelist Daniel Klinda and I'm praying in front of thousands of people. Come on. <laughs> never in my life. Never in my life. I started off with one other person walking downtown in a street, preaching Jesus and just being faithful for what he got me. And next thing you know, I'm standing in front of thousands of people. And evangelist Daniel Clinton always told this in the boot camp, you know, that the platform isn't given to the, you know, the gifted and the talented. It's given to the faithful. Wow. The faithful. Yeah. The, it's the faithful ones. You know, and I keep saying yes and I keep going. Next thing you know, like, you know, I'm hearing in my heart to go to Seattle. We jump on a plane. Mm -hmm. We go to Seattle. We walk in the middle of the riots. God said, tear down the stronghold. How do you tear down a stronghold? Show people the love of Christ. Come on. Show people the love of Christ. We go up in there. We were there for five days. On the fifth day, the mayor got on the news and said, we're disbanding CHOP. Next week, it was obsolete. 
I saw that. That's crazy, yeah. dude. <laughs> we're taking captive. We're, we're tearing down strongholds, not just in our mind, but over our cities, over our nation, over our thing. When we see oh. crises, you know, we need to be like, mm. oh, we need to pray for those people. No, we need to go there and be the answer. Whoa. We need to go be Jesus for people. You know, mm. when God told me to go to Pakistan, I went to Pakistan. We did a crusade in Pakistan. We get off the plane. Let me tell you about being constricted. They have the mm. blasphemy law where you convert a Muslim to a Christian. They can kill you. The constriction of the Holy Spirit there was just, ah, I was weighing. It was like, ah, you know, and it was just like, but I felt this bubbling in me. Mm. I felt that bubbling. And I'm like, yo, they do not know who my God is, you know? Yeah. And then like, we get this private field and we go up there and we have the stage. Next thing you know, we're in front of like six, 8,000 people, you know? And let me tell you, that was the greatest release that I've ever felt in my life because I was in such a dark place and such constriction. When we got up there, boom. You know, we saw miracles. We, we people were bringing bringing people that were up there that were you know possessed by demons. They were getting casted out. People were mm. bringing up water bottles for us to bless them and anointing bottles for us to bless them to bring them back home to the sick. We had mm. a man that couldn't Whoa. speak since he was a young boy, and he gets up on the stage. I'm thinking he has a testimony that he got healed, and I'm looking at the guy, and I was like, you know, what'd you get healed from? And he couldn't speak. He came up there to get prayed for. So here I am in front of all these people. And I'm like, God, you better show up. And I pray for the man. And then I said, you know, just say a word. He looks at me, he goes, no. Shakes his head and says, no. You know, doesn't say no, just shakes his head like no. And I'm like, oh my gosh, all these people are expecting a miracle. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, God, you know, you know, generally people would have been like, oh, let's just get him off stage. Let's pray for him in the back. You know, let's roll on to the next person. But I was like, no, like, you know, <clears> we're going to get up here and say we're going to do miracles and we're going to pray for the sick and we're going to see him get healed. You know, let's really get down to this. Come on. And so we prayed again. And then afterward, I said, say the word amen. And then he opens up his mouth and he says, amen. The crowd goes wild. The, the altars get <laughs> flooded and the altars are flooded. I got a guy on the right and on the left of me that's security and they have pistols in their hands. They have handguns in their hands just in case people are coming up. Like that's <laughs> I mean, that's crazy. Yeah. I'm sitting there. I'm like seeing a guy with his gun, a gun in his hand to the right, gun in his hand to his left, and I'm just like, "This is crazy." That's so you know? awesome, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is it crazy. was wild, you know. Wow. And this, I, I'll, I'll end with this story, and we just want to pray for people. We want to flow into this because, man, this isn't just for special people. This is for ordinary people like me, you Absolutely. know, that have a wife, two kids, you know, that worked a regular job but just kept saying yes. Come and there's on, people man. here tonight, you know, they want to say yes. And you are saying yes in your heart. And I really believe that you're going to be touched tonight. You're going to be filled tonight. There's going to be an impartation tonight. Just like mm. Paul says, like with the laying on the hands, you know, they took handkerchiefs, his shadow, you know, Peter shadow healed people. You know, mm. I've seen people get healed over radio services, everything. We're going to mm -hmm. pray for the sick. We're That's going to right. pray for people to get delivered. Well, most of all, we're going to pray for, for people to get filled with the Holy Spirit. Because one thing I know is when you start praying for people to get filled with the Holy Spirit, healing happens, deliverance happens. Come on. It all happens because it's the spirit of God unleashing itself. Come on. So just recently we were in the city. Uh, we were in the country of Tanzania. We went back there and this was my second trip with Christ for all nations. And this is the first time I got to be an actual guest evangelist and actually preach a whole message a couple of times. But before that I had to go to another city and I helped, I helped get it set up and I was coaching some new guys directing and I was flying on a plane and God gave me a word. There's something about when God gives you a word, when you're going into a territory, when you're going into mm -hmm. a situation, could be your marriage, could be your town, could be your school, could be your job. When God gives you a specific word and you release that word, it's going to tear down strongholds. Come on. It really will. So God gave me the word, you know, and he said, I was flying on the plane. He said, there's a giant in the land. Mm. I said, oh, God, there's a giant in the land, mm. you know? Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, it brings me to David, Goliath. You know, what's the first thing David did? He, 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 he asked who the giant was. He found out who he identified the giant. He confronted the giant. Then he killed the giant. Mm -hmm. So I roll up in the city. I'm with the top bishops. These guys are over like 300 churches, 400 churches, 500 churches, you know, big men of God. You know, they, they've been playing churches their whole life. And I ask him a question. I don't even work them up to it. I just said, who's the giant in the land out of nowhere? Mm -hmm. They all looked at me. Without hesitation, they knew what I was talking about. That's when you know it's God. You don't have to mm. explain things. You just release something and the spirit starts working. 
Mm. I released this and they said, Islam, Islam is taking over our city. It's taking our businesses financially, wow. people that need jobs. They're saying mm. they'll only hire them if they're Muslim. That's the way that they're really spreading Islam fast. Mm. And I said, okay. I said, God is telling me right now that we need to go meet with the sheiks and we need to have dinner with them. <laughs> and if you don't know what, it, if you don't know what a sheik is, a sheik is just as like a pastor of a church. He's the leader. He's just like, you know, your pastor at your church is a sheep. So we reach out to the sheiks. They're kind of uneasy. They're like, man, we don't really know these people. What's going on? Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, we, we, we canvass the town with promo billboards everywhere, radio, everybody knows who we are. And we, you know, I get with one of the bishops. I said, how do we get in? And he said, you know, this is what we should do. We should go to the orphanage. You know, they have a Muslim orphanage. We should go in there and we should bless them with some food, some prizes, and we should just love on the children. I said, great idea. So we get a bunch of food, we get a bunch of prizes, we go up into the mosque, like this is on a mosque, on a Muslim facility. So we're going into the enemy's territory. We go into the school where all the children are, they gather all the children, we're giving food, we're playing games with them, we're loving on them. And I go to the guy, the head guy, and I said, look, I just wanna share for five, 10 minutes. And I'm sharing, I'm sharing about the crusade, I'm sharing about God, I'm sharing about miracles. You know, I'm very cautious about, you know, I'm trying to honor the place too at the same time, I'm trying to build bridges. But God highlights a young man to me. I pull him to the side afterward. He gets saved right on the property. It was pretty awesome. So I went to the territory, ta -ta -ta, fighting people. And then next thing you know, the sheik, the head sheik of the area, wants to come and have dinner with us. He's over 400 mosques. He comes in. Bro. He's having dinner with us. He walks mm. in with 10 of his people that he works with. All his cabinet, mm. all his other sheiks. 10 Muslims come in, they got their hats on, they got their full out dress. I'm standing there, I'm like, mm. what am I doing? You know, what am I doing, God? What are you doing? <laughs> and so I share about what we did at the orphanage. I share about the crusade. Then the head sheet comes up. I don't know what he's gonna say. He looks at me and he says, I don't know why, why you guys wanted to invite us or why you guys wanted us to come here, but now I know why, it's because you guys are good people. He says, I'm going to tell everybody that I know that you guys are good people. And what mm. that meant for us is it meant it was an open door for that those Muslims to come to the crusade because he was calling it a social event and that it was okay. And I invited them to the event. This is a social event. Next thing you know, this we had record-breaking number in this city. Over 36,000 people came in one night to hear the gospel. Muslims were getting saved. People were getting healed. And that's the boldness that Christ is looking for, is that you will go into the enemy's territory. You will meet the enemy face to face and you will kill them, not with mm -hmm. the weapons of warfare, but with our weapons, you know, mm -hmm. with the sword of the spirit, you know, with the helmet of our salvation, with the you know shield of faith, you know. And, you know, that's what it takes, guys. It takes stepping out. I didn't start off in some, you know. I didn't get some special mantle or some special anointing. I wasn't a priest. <laughs> I wasn't a king. But when Come I on. got saved by Jesus Christ, Come on. I became a part of the royal priesthood. Come on. He marked me. The word anointing means to smear. I mm. was smeared with Jesus from the inside out. I was washed in the blood. I had mm. a testimony. I was filled with the fire of God. And when mm. the fire of God touched me, he said, go to the darkness. Mm. I began to go to the darkness. I started lighting up the darkness in small places. He took mm. me from the street corner, put me into public schools, put mm. me into churches across America, then started putting me into different countries and different continents. Mm. I traveled more in the last year and a half than I've done in my entire life. I've been on, you know, 12 different flights. I've been to three different continents in the middle of a pandemic. <laughs> the because just, the Holy the Ghost does not like to be constricted. I've, I've, I've preached at three crusades over the last two years. I've been a part of teams and things. We've seen over 700,000 salvations. We have literally shaken cities mm -hmm. and we've seen people come to Jesus in the mm -hmm. middle of the worst thing that has happened in this world. Because I'll tell you something that God doesn't care what the world is going through. It doesn't hey. care what season it is. He is a part of a different kingdom and he wants to bring his kingdom to earth. He wants every priest that has accepted Jesus to go change the situation. Many people are praying for God to change things when he's saying you need to go out there and be the change. He is shaking the place to see who's gonna wake up and who's gonna erupt. 
That's what it's truly about. He is calling. There's a threshold. The sword is coming. He's coming through the clouds. He's splitting families in half. People are fighting over what they believe in, what politician, what COVID. Families are being splitted. This is in the Bible that sons will be against fathers and mothers against daughters. There's a split that's going on. God is drawing a line in the sand, everybody. He's drawing Amen. a line. The remnant Amen. is the only people that are going to make it. When Listen, when Jesus Christ was crucified, the remnant was told they fled Israel. They came in. They killed everybody else. Mm. They killed mm. everybody else. Don't be killed in this season. Don't Come be on. affected. Don't be constricted. Don't feel like you can't be the change in your town. I don't care if you're in a democratic state, a Republican state, if you're in a country that you know is first world or third world. Listen, the Holy Spirit Come only on. knows his world. He Come only on. knows his world. His world Come is on. freedom, joy, peace, love, kindness, and long suffering. There will be persecution. There'll be tough times. There will be trials. There will be tribulations. This isn't all glory, glory floating in the in the clouds. The reason why the apostles they saw the glory that they did is because after persecution they got back up and they ran after it. They counted the cost. They left everything. They left mm. people behind. They left families. They mm. went. They went the distance. God is looking for people that are going the distance. And if you're listening right now mm. and you need to be renewed, you need to be revived. Come on, go ahead. Brother. If you're listening right now and you're getting on, you're like, man, I've never heard this gospel. I've never heard it preached like this. I've never heard of Jesus like this. I'm here to tell you that you might not know Jesus. And there's people here right now. If you don't know the gospel that I know, the gospel of freedom, deliverance. The gospel that comes inside your heart, that sets you free, that gives you access to a father that will speak to you, that will give you visions, dreams, that will that will take you places, that will give you financial provision, that will bless your family, that will give you a grace. If you feel like you've been running on empty, if you feel like you've never felt like you've been full, listen, the gospel is here tonight for you. And if there's anybody that's listening right now and you want this gospel, I want you to close your eyes right where you're at. And I want you to pray with me. Just say, dear Jesus, I ask you. I ask you into my heart to forgive me of my sins. To wash me with the blood of Jesus. I ask you to be my Lord. I ask you to be my friend. I ask you to touch me. I ask you to fill me in the places that I've held lock. Just say this, I surrender all my fears. I surrender all my fears. Lord, I thank you that you're setting people free right now. I thank you that strongholds in people's minds that are being set free. I thank you that there's people that have had dreams and visions and they feel like it's been too late. God is saying now is the time. Now is the time. I thank you that there's countries right now, countries like Uganda. God, I thank you that there's countries right now, countries like India, uh, Istanbul. I don't know how to pronounce it like Istanbul. God, I, I thank you that there's places that are being on people's hearts. I see somebody just witnessing to somebody on a park bench. Lord, I, I thank you right now for every person that's listening. And right now what I want to do is I want to pray just for a spirit of boldness. In Acts chapter 4, they went out and they cried out to God, give us more boldness. And they cried out for God to stretch forth through the saints to see mighty miracles happen. And if that's you right now, I want you just to relax. I want you to get in a place of receiving a place of humility saying, God, I want more. I want to be hungry. God, make me hungry right now. God, I pray for great expectation right now. God, I just pray right now for expectation to rise in the room on this broadcast live, wherever someone's at. If there's people that are around you that are distracting you, go find somewhere that's quiet. And what I want you to do is I just want you to put your hand just right over your stomach. The reason why I say your stomach is just your bowels, your innermost being. God wants to erupt in you. You already have every gifting that you need. 
You have already every word that you need is inside of you. Every command that God is going to speak to you is already inside of you. And I'm going to pray for an eruption just to break forth for words to come forth. God, I'm going to pray for the Holy Spirit. God, just to just to break out and that he's going to fill people and people are going to be filled from their innermost beings. That river that we were talking about that Claudio Frazon has swimmed in, that Carlos Anaconda, Leonard Ravenhill, Daniel Kalindas, the the seam, you know, the Seymours, God, these great men of faith. God, that there's nothing special, but they surrender to you. So right now, just put your hand over your stomach and I'm gonna pray. Jesus, I pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for a filling of the Holy Spirit. I pray for fire right now. Pray for the spirit to bubble up right now from their stomachs, God, right out of their mouths, God. I pray for tongues of fire right now. Holy Spirit. Fresh fire right now. Fire. I feel like somebody's feeling fire in their toes. Lord, I, I command that fire, God, to go all the way up, all the way up. Fill them all the way up from their toes to their head, God. Saturate them right now. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. God, I pray for somebody's pancreas, God, that you would just have a, a healing touch over a, a pancreas, God. Lord, I pray right now. If there's any pain on your body. I just want you to put your hand where that pain is, where that sickness has been. And I just want to pray for you. Lord, I pray right now in the name of Jesus, God, I pray healing, God. I pray for your healing oil, God, to touch every bone, every tendon, every vertebrae, every disc, God, every joint right now, God. Lord, I pray for every joint, God. I pray against arthritis right now, God. Lord, I pray for against the crackling, God, in knees. God, I pray for tendons right now to be strengthened. God, I pray for bones to be made whole right now. Bones to be made whole right now, God. Lord, I pray for people's teeth, God. God, we don't have to go to a, a dentist, God. I pray just for supernatural healing in the teeth, God. Lord, I pray for people's uh, teeth to be filled in right now, God. Fill them in right now, God. Lord, I pray for teeth to grow back, God. I pray for faith, God, to rise up. Gift of faith, gift of miracles right now. Uh, creative miracles be released in this atmosphere. God, I pray for teeth to grow back, God. Lord, I just pray for just, just hair to be rejuvenated, God. Hair on people's scalps to be rejuvenated, God. Lord, I pray for freshness in this room. Freshness, freshness, freshness. Fresh touch. Fresh touch right now, God. God, I pray that you release, God. I pray that you release vision and strategy, vision and strategy over cities, over territories. And I pray for boldness to go and take them for Jesus. Take them for Jesus, God. I pray for Waco, Texas, God, to be taken for Jesus, God. God, I pray for Louisiana to be taken for Jesus, God. Lord, I pray for Nevada to be taken for Jesus, God. Lord, I pray just uh, for that Midwest, God, for that that re not re that revival, God, that uh, that happened there with people like Catherine Coleman, God, and uh, Evangelist Amy, God. Lord, I pray for revival to be birthed, God, there in the Midwest region, God. Jesus, I thank you for the the breath of God, God. I pray for Evangelist uh, Revivalist Nelson right now, God. Lord, I thank you for his city, God. I thank you for his street corners, God. Lord, I, I pray for Timothy's. I pray for Timothy's to come around him, God. Lord, I pray for bodies of Christ, God, um, mm -hmm. to not see him as just independent or anything of that nature, but to see him as a beloved son, yes. God, who loves you and who's connected with you. God, I speak that over him, God. Any false judgments, God, Lord, we cast them down. God, and I pray that people see growth. I say that people see the growth, that things that were in the past are no longer there. But I pray, God, that people, we have the eyes of Jesus to see that future, to see that growth in that future. I pray for everyone here, God. Lord, they've been around the same circles. 
Right. I really feel this on my heart right now that people have been around the same circles, the same people, and they are projecting the same old judgments on you. And you feel like you're trying to change and you feel like you have to prove something. I break that mold right now in the name of Jesus, God. I break it in the name of Jesus, God. Amen. I pray for new eyes Amen. for the people that are around them, God, to see that Amen. change, God, to see that progress, God, to see that 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 maturity, God. I command the, their sphere of influence. I got. I, I command their sphere of influence, God, to increase, increase over their lives, God. Increase, increase, increase. Bless their family. Bless their marriages. Bless their children. Bless their ministries. Bless their churches. Bless their communities, God. I speak the blessing, God, of the covenant, God. Mm. I speak a covenant blessing over them right mm. now, God. Thank covenant you, blessing, God. Receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it. You are a royal priesthood. You are a king. You sit at the right hand of God. You have all power and all authority over everything over this earth. And I pray for the boldness for people to step out into that. Thank you, Thank Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. And right now, guys, I just put the link down in the live chat for you. If you want to receive prayer live tonight. I'm going to, I'm going to let Joe turn. I'm going to let the bull loose, turn bull loose. Bull. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and if you want to join tonight live, if you've not received the baptism of the Holy spirit, I believe you're going to receive it tonight because that's the secret to boldness. If you've not, if you need healing and deliverance, I believe the Holy ghost will do it too. Right now, live on this glory podcast, the Holy ghost will touch you. I'm going to give at least three to five people to join tonight and i'm and i'm gonna let and joe you're cool with that right just praying yeah. for them live on the broadcast yeah 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 so if you guys join in now um you just gotta give the phone permission to get access to your camera or, or your microphone just ju jump right in i'll add you one by one um if we get you know if it, and don't worry about how you look on camera guys yeah. <laughs> just come receive a fresh touch uh from the holy ghost and if you guys are willing come and do that uh, but i even feel right now I'm just going to pray a prayer for even those who watch the replay who want a fresh touch of the Holy Spirit. Father, I pray, Lord, for every viewer live and who will watch the replay. Holy Spirit, touch right now in Jesus name. Father, I thank you for the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. That they would receive their prayer language. That they would receive a fresh touch in Jesus' name. Right now, if you're watching this and you're saying, I want that boldness. I want that baptism of the Holy Ghost. I want to speak in tongues. Right now is your chance. Just say this. Say, Holy Spirit, baptize me right now. Now watch this. I'm going to release this. You're going to speak and it's going to come upon you. So, Father, right now, I thank you that as they've spoken, they receive the free gift in Jesus' name. Just open your mouth and speak right there. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Touch that one right there in Jesus' name. Touch that one right there in Jesus' name. Praise God. Jesus. Praise God. So uh, we have a few people in here. We got about three people in here. Joe, I'm going to introduce them and then I'm going to let you go ahead and minister. to. Uh, I'm going to put them in and then I'm going to let you go ahead and minister to them. All right. All right. As uh, Just as if it was in person, one on one kind of deal. All right. That's cool. <laughs> awesome. So uh, Mary King, when you're ready, just give me a thumbs up. OK. All righty. So I'm gonna go ahead and add her on right here. How's Hi. it going? <laughs> awesome, awesome. So tell us where you're watching from and tell us uh what you'd like prayer for. Um, I'm in South Bend, Indiana. And today I, I stepped out with my father in law. We went out to um pray for people a little bit. And I don't wanna have any fear. I just wanna step out and be bold, like, so bold. I want to be used like God used the people spoke of in the Bible. Yeah, amen. As soon as you started speaking, before you said you even went out, I just saw hands 
and then I saw I heard God say like gift of healing and he's gonna use your hands for healing and that you know your boldness is gonna be laying your hands on the sick and just asking people you know if they have any sickness in their body or if they have any pain in their body and then when you lay hands on them they're gonna feel the anointing they're gonna feel the fire of God they're gonna feel the pain leave and it's gonna be the easiest door that you've had to share the gospel with and you're gonna get a manifestation before a presentation presentation and I really feel like God's just gonna fill you um, right now he's gonna touch you I believe he's already breaking things off of you I see a shell like around you and it's beginning to crack it's cracking it has like pressure cracks kind of all over but that thing's gonna oh. peel off it's gonna peel off and um, it's going to get to the yoke and then the yoke is just going to be it's the best part it's going to shine through the earth and uh, you know i really feel like that you know maybe you even have missions on your heart and one day that you you know you'll be doing some missions um but let me just pray for you real quick just just uh yeah just put your just put your hand over your heart real quick and uh it's mary right yeah yeah lord lord i thank you for mary i got i thank you for her life god Lord, I pray right now, God. God, I pray against just any insecurity, God. I pray that you fill her with your spirit and that you're all her security, God. Lord, I thank you, God, that you're going to give her words of knowledge, God, and words of wisdom to speak and to share with people. But most of all, God, I pray and I bless those hands in the name of Jesus, God. I release a gift of healing in her life, God, a gift of healing to be released over her, in her, God, and the gift of faith. God, I release that gift of faith, God, and I pray that that measure of faith that you give to her, God, that she stewards it well. God, I, I, I pray for just that faithfulness, God, that stewardship, God. God, just let her be disciplined in your word. I pray for hunger for the word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. I thank you that her faith is going to grow from that. Not And only just going out, God, but when she's in, filling up with the word as she goes out, God. So, Lord, God, I thank you that she bears the image of Christ, God. I thank you that she's a daughter of the king. God, I thank you that all her sins, God, are casted from the east to the west, God. And I thank you that the blood of Jesus, God, has cleansed her and that she has a clear consciousness, God. Lord, and uh, if there's any past relationships, God, that have been a hindrance, God, to her walk, God. Lord, I pray healing right now, God. Healing over her mind in that situation, God. Lord, that if she's felt like she's not good enough, God, or people have been condescending to her, God. Lord, I speak healing over her, God. And I lift her up as a sister and as a mouthpiece for God in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Oh, amen. Thank you. Lord amen. God. <laughs> amen. Ooh. Does any of that bear witness with you? Uh, yeah, yeah, it does. Um, also, I had a um, I had a miscarriage uh, last month on the third, mm. and um, that yeah. that was a miracle. Like it was a miracle, and I feel like I was sad, but it was like a test from God. Like even through my pain and my hurt, am, are you still going to serve me? And all I could do is, is thank God because God is a better caregiver than any of us. And mm -hmm. I had to look at it if God wanted my child to be next to him. Mm -hmm. And all I can do is give God praise because yeah. I don't know what the camera's doing. But <laughs> it's all good. Like, like I look at life and everything that happens so different now. And I thank God. I just thank God for it. Come on, sister. He gets the glory. Amen. 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 Bless you, sister. Thank you for coming on, Mary. Bless you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Bless you, sister. Bye-bye. Praise God, man. Praise God. You ready for another one, brother? Let's do it. <laughs> All right. I'm I feel it. See I here. feel it. You know, yeah. you get in that zone. I know. The anointing starts flowing. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron Boyd, put your thumb up whenever you're ready. Just thumbs up like this. There you go. All right. Here you go. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> hey, all right. I'm good. How are y'all? <laughs> oh. Good, yeah, well, good. 
So tell us where you're watching from and then uh and what you I'm just gonna hold it. Okay, you go ahead. <laughs> where you're watching from I am from, actually and, from mm -hmm. Columbia, South Carolina. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, yeah. I'll go ahead and let uh Joe pray for you. I mean, you know, is there anything specific that you just felt? Um, I think the biggest thing is um, a struggle, struggling with boldness. Um, mm -hmm. I've been having moments, I think, where I feel like I need to say something or need to speak up. And um, I just kind of struggling in that area. And then yeah. really just with getting started, I guess, in a okay. sense, really. In a sense. Yeah. Okay, cool. I just really felt God just like... Um really felt specific kind of like boldness in your workplace like yeah. you know in your workplace like boldness even things that you might have gotten ideas or things might not have been right you know even the boldness to stand up for like injustice you know to stand up for justice or things that you feel like should be done different you know and i believe that god's given you wisdom you know and you kind of see people around you that you care for and um, kind of see how things are handled um, so I'm just going to pray that God gives you boldness, you know, for that territory and just to kind of go in there and just be a light for that area. And, um, you know, and also too, there's a good tool that I'll share with you real quick after I pray. Cool. So what was your name again? I'm sorry. It was, uh, Aaron, Aaron, Aaron. Cool. Lord, I lift up Aaron to you, God, Lord, I lift up her life. God, I thank you for the wisdom God that you have uh, planted in her God. God, I thank you that she truly cares for people, God, that she has a compassionate heart, God, that she feels, you know, people's pain, that she feels uh, how people feel around her, God, that you've given her just that sensitivity to people's feelings and people's hearts, God. Lord, I, I pray that you take that gifting, God, and I pray that instead of it, like, uh, destroying her or making her feel bad and or anything of that nature, God, that it would just be used for your glory, God, that you begin to speak to those people, to their feelings, that she would speak life, God, or that you give, you're given her, you've given her words of wisdom and words of knowledge, God. I pray for that workplace, God. I pray for strategy, God. Lord, I pray that you cut anything off, God, that's not of you, God. And I pray for transformation in her life around her family members, God. Uh, around her workplace, God, just where she goes, God. And I thank you that all she has to do is tell people that God just loves them and has a plan for their life. God, and I pray that this week, God, that you bring a situation forth where she has to rise up, where she feels that burning in her heart and she knows it's you and she knows it's not her and her opinion, God. Lord, I pray a separation, God, from her opinion and from your word, God. I pray that it be clearer than ever, God, that it's you and that she has to speak, God. So, Lord, I thank you for this opportunity that you're going to give her. God, I pray that you, I pray a special blessing over her, God. And I pray increase in her life in Jesus' name. Hey, so real quick, I have a friend. His name's Scott McNamara. He has a ministry. It's called Jesus at the Door. Okay. So if you Google Jesus at the Door, it will come up. And it has a cool little picture and it has like some things to say. I don't know if you ever heard of it, but like it's a, it's a really cool strategy and it's a great icebreaker. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Jesus at the door. Yeah. It's knocking on the door of people's hearts. You'll really love it. It's good. Okay. I'll check that out. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. Absolutely. Bless you, Aaron. You have a blessed day. Okay. Thank you for coming on. Y'all have a wonderful you. night. You got it. You got it. Awesome, man. I'm feeling maybe like uh, one or two more. How do you feel? Yeah, that's good. Two more is good? Awesome. Yeah. Okay, so let's see here. So I, there's a lot more in the back room. Uh, unfortunately, guys, tonight, I believe we're, we're only going to do like two or one or two more. Um, unless unless Joe says something differently. <laughs> but uh, well, I mean, yeah, one or two is good. And then uh, you can reach out personally to Nelson or myself. He can get you connected, you know, and we'd love to, you know, if there's anything on your heart. Listen, if you guys are looking for an open door to go share your faith or to travel the world or do anything, I would love for you to reach out to me. Whatever connections I have or different avenues that I have, um, you know, God says freely give as you've received. So um, I just want to open the doors, open the highways to you. You know, if you need help with any strategies, 
Um, I love sitting down with people, kind of going over visions, you know, giving them step by step things to do just uh, as the wisdom of the Holy Spirit leads me just mm -hmm. to take your city and just how to step out there and different tools, different things to use to become bold. A lot of times icebreakers are good. Different things mm -hmm. are good. And just hearing different tactics that have worked, um, yeah. you know, because the Bible works, Come you know, on. so God gives us tactics and different things that do work. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Amen. So I'm going to bring in Kelly. Give us a thumbs up whenever you're ready. Kelly. All right. Here we go. Hey, Kelly. Good to see you again. Good to see you. <laughs> so go ahead and let us know where you're watching from and what you need prayer for. I need. I need prayer for I need uh, I feel like God want me to do a lot of things, but I, but I don't have all the clarity. I just want clarity on what he wants me to really do. I'm okay. I'm kind of confused about the things he's saying. They're so confused. Yeah, I don't get the I don't have like a clear one, two, three. Yeah, it's so clear one, two, three together. Yeah. OK, awesome. Let me pray for you real quick. Lord, I thank you right now for my sister, God. Lord, I pray right now, God, that you would remove the things that are not of you, God, and the things that are burning on her heart, God. Lord, that it would be it would be prevalent, God, that it'd be clear, that it'd be decisiveness, God. Lord, I pray just against that double mindedness, God. Lord, I pray that she puts one foot, both feet all the way in. And I just I just thank you that you have told her things, God. You have told her things, God, and it's not too late. It's not too far fetched, God. I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you bring those to her front consciousness, God. The things that you have told her, God, bring it forth, God. I feel like, you know, sometimes we look for God to say new things, but he's told us things. So, God, I pray for those things, those places that have burned on her heart, God, those things that have burned on her heart, God to be refreshed, God. I breathe life. I breathe life on the things that which were old, God, and that you make things new, God. Lord, I thank you that you put her in her situation that she's in, God. Lord, and I pray, God, that she grows in that situation, in her confidence in you, God, and that she changes the situation, God, that she doesn't look for a way out, but she looks to you and that you are the way, the truth, and the life, God. I pray for that change in her life, to be within her, so then it affects around her. I thank you for her. I bless her children, God. I bless her in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, <laughs> Amen Sister Kelly. God bless you. <laughs> you got it. You got it. All right, one more. We're going to do one more tonight. Let's see, Holy Spirit. <laughs> All righty. Vasari, give me a thumbs up when you're ready. Perfect. All right. Vasari, tell us where you're watching from. Hey. <laughs> All right. And tell us what you need prayer for. Boldness. Boldness to step out. Okay. Yeah. What was your name again? Vasari. We're sorry. And where were you from? Boston. Man. Boston. Okay. All right. Just close your eyes real quick. I just want you to put your hand over your heart. Jesus, I pray right now to fill her with your love, God. I pray for unconditional love to be poured out right now. Pour it, pour it out, God. I pray for all hurt, God. I pray for that new heart, God, to be birthed forth, God. Lord, and I pray that the love of God be manifested right now in her life, God. And I pray that you put the glory of God on her face and in her life, God. I pray that she no longer walks with her head down, God, but that she looks up, that she looks up in the name of Jesus, God. I break off fear. I break off condemnation. I break off guilt in Jesus' mighty name, all guilt and shame. Be gone, fresh touch, fresh touch, fresh touch in Jesus' name, God. Lord, I pray that she's just 
connected in a deeper way in the body of Christ, God, and that her giftings, God, she steps into her giftings for the body of Christ. God, I release it right now in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Seven, six, one, zero, zero, four, five, zero. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> One, not sure what that is. Take care of us. Sorry. It was like a. It just started like counting. Somebody was calling her. Somebody was calling her. That's probably what it was. That's probably what it was. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, man. I appreciate you coming on tonight. Yeah. (laughs) Hey, look. About South Texas. Yeah. Serious about that. Get on that. Oh yeah, we're gonna talk about it. We're gonna definitely talk about this. uh, more off the <laughs> yeah 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 it's bro, gonna happen oh i'm so excited bro it's, already, it's gonna it, it's gonna happen you know like, oh yeah it's just a matter of uh we all want to be a part of it or not you know but you know we you know it, it's burning it's not gonna go yeah so yeah, man. Hey, man, really awesome thank you for having me man so cool this time flew by uh, thank you for this and just for everyone else that we didn't get to, man, God just loves you so much. And you have everything that God, you have everything you need. It's inside of you. People look into the left, look into the right. The kingdom's inside of you. Just release it. Just step out. Do one thing, man. You know, if you've never shared Christ with someone, just tell someone, hey, man, do you know God loves you today? You don't have to go through a whole thing. You don't have to do anything, but just take that first step. And when you mm-hmm. walk away after you say that to someone, you're going to feel something. Yeah. You're going to feel what I felt. Yeah. And then keep going after that. Keep cool. going after that. And it will grow. Oh, yeah. Love you guys. Thank you so much. I'll be looking forward yeah. to hearing from you, Nelson. Yeah, you got it, man. And can you tell them where they could find you? Uh, I put on the description, I put your Facebook. But if yeah. there, is there any other way that, that they can connect with you or, or you know, maybe support what you're doing? Yeah, just uh, you can go on JesusFuel.com. It's a website. Um, you can. You know, go on there. You can see pictures of things that we've done, videos of things that we've done. It's JesusFuel.com. And then, you know, you can just reach out to me on Facebook also on Messenger. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to chat with you. Um, well, you know, if you want to follow us on there too, that's where the mostly thing is. Mm. Uh, you know, it's because I'm a millennial. It is what it is. <laughs> for sure, yeah. man. For sure. Yeah. And and guys, I want to just say this. First of all, I want to honor you, Joe. Thank you for coming on tonight, bro. You've been a blessing to us. Thank you for what you're doing for the kingdom of God, man. Just tearing down for probably me and you are going to talk more because I need yeah. to get some strategies from you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but I do want to say this, guys. Tonight, we do have an opportunity. I want to sow into Joe's life. Um, so, guys, if you want to sow tonight, there's a link in the description. There's a, a pin. The pinned comment is is there for PayPal or for, you know, Cash App and all those different details. Venmo. It's all in the description. If you want to sew tonight, we're I'm going to sew into you, brother. So I just want you to know we're going to bless you, awesome. man. We love you. Thank you. Uh, we want to thank you for what you're doing, man. And, uh, you know, yeah. what we'll do is I'm going to close out the broadcast here on my end and then I'm going to call you so we can. Uh, Chit chat some more. Sound good? All right. Sounds good. All right, bro. Love you, man. Thank you for coming on tonight. All right. Bye. You got it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, guys. That was awesome, man. That was awesome. And I'm super blessed, super grateful. Thank God for uh, Evangelist Joe Turnbull, who's going out there, man. He's tearing it up. 700,000 salvations in just the last year and a half of his ministry. I mean, come on. If that's not preaching to you about faithfulness and stewardship, being faithful in the little, and that that God can trust you with the much, if that doesn't preach to you about how boldness can lead and put you in front of many, I mean, going to, uh, you know, what was it? Uh, I forgot what country he said. I don't know if it was Tanzania or another one. But talking to the to the head sheikh and 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 getting their their support uh, when Islam was the biggest giant in the land, walking through the uh, Pakistan where they were they could have shot him dead had he because he confesses Christ as Lord. I mean, just amazing guys. 
This is the power of the gospel that we get to be fearless. How many of you know Paul said, I am unashamed of the gospel for it is the power of God unto salvation. We cannot be ashamed of this gospel. We must go out there and be bold. We must be, go out there and be faithful. There's souls that are dying every day on their way to hell and they're waiting for you and me to go out there and be ready to win them. How many of you know the harvest is ripe and the laborers are few. We don't just pray to the Lord of the harvest to send forth labors. We say, Lord, here am I, send me as a laborer. And let me tell you something. The greatest ability you have is to become available. The greatest ability you have is your availability to God. Your availability is all he's asking for. You become available for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And I guarantee you, he is good enough. He is faithful enough to go out there and back up his own word. You go out there and say, listen, Jesus heals. Jesus delivers. You may not know how to pray for healing. You may not know how to pray for deliverance. You may not know how to preach the gospel. But you go out there and simply say, Jesus saves, Jesus heals, Jesus delivers, and you demonstrate and say, and I can prove it. Go ahead and say that. Jesus heals, Jesus saves, Jesus delivers, and I can prove it. And people say, well, yeah, prove it. Perfect. Come over here. Bring me the sick. Bring me the demon possessed. And God, listen, it has nothing to do with you. God just needs you to be available. And God will back up his own truth with signs, wonders, and miracles. God will support his own word. All he's waiting is, will there be a vessel that's faithful? Will there be a vessel that's available? Will there be a vessel that's willing to be poured out so that I can prove who I am to this world? Hallelujah. The the world is not waiting for a new definition of Christianity. The world is waiting for a demonstration of what true Christianity is, what the Bible really says. The world is waiting for us to demonstrate it. Man, I could preach a whole nother message tonight. But guys, if you want to sow tonight, go ahead and do so. I'm going to read out the, some of those uh those of you who sold tonight, I'm going to read out your donations. I want to I want to appreciate you. I want to just say thank you real quick to all of you who have sold already, who have been sowing to the ministry faithfully. Um, I want to say thank you. You guys, oh, Ramasaya. Yeah, I feel the anointing too. I, oh, Ramasaya. Yeah, guys, I want to thank you guys. If you guys notice, I'm in a new setup. Uh, I'm actually in a new space. I'm currently getting it all decorated and stuff. Um because we have some exciting stuff coming. I'm still not going to announce it yet. Uh, we will soon. I've been saying that for weeks, haven't I? Uh, but <laughs> we are working on some ridiculous, amazing stuff. Um, and now I'm going to really get together with my brother, Joe, because uh, we're going to strategize and talk about some more amazing stuff about what God is about to do here in Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas. Um, as you guys know, majority of what I've been doing has been, uh, you know, sort of hidden behind scenes, just kind of not, I haven't really recorded much of what we do out in the streets and things like that on a daily basis. We're seeing the sick healed, the demons, you know, cast out and things like that. Um, but soon we're going to be more faithful and more consistent in recording what God does. Uh, we're going to start doing some stuff here on a local level uh, to see, to, to host the glory here in, in Dallas. And then we're probably going to be working on some uh, potential revival events that we're going to be um, doing with some of these amazing on fire, fire breathing uh, <laughs> revivalists that God is raising up. How many of you know that God's raising up a new army of generals and uh, man, we want to have them on the glory podcast. So next week, guys, I'm going to have another amazing evangelist. Some of you probably know him. He's friends with uh, Daniel Adams. His name is Rich. Rich 99 uh, he, or, or Richard, uh, you know, he he's really powerful. We're going to have him on Wednesday next week. And then, guys, uh, so many of you told me to get Dustin from Street Ministry 7. <coughs> Excuse me. Ran out of water. <laughs> I do too much talking. Um, yeah, so some of, a lot of you have told me you want me to get Dustin from Street Ministry 7 on. You guys need to reach out to him, uh, comment on his channel. I know so many of you want me to, to get him on. Comment on his channel. Tell him, hey, go on Nelson's podcast. Go on Nelson's podcast. Um, I've reached out to him, but I haven't heard back. Uh, he's also very busy, so you got to be you got to be fair with that. He's been doing a lot of traveling. Um, he is a good friend of mine, but I haven't spoke to him in a little while because he's been doing so much traveling. 
But if you guys, um, yeah, see, Mary King just said he's in, he was in Chicago. Yeah, so yeah, so if you guys want to, you guys got to help me get his attention because he's a busy guy. <laughs> but I want to get him on too. This month we're doing a series on evangelism uh, because I believe it's time for us to go out there and actually do something for the kingdom. Amen. So I want to just go ahead and read some of these donations, uh, Aaron. Thank you so much for the seed that you just donated. God bless you. May the Lord increase and multiply you in the name of Jesus. Um, I see here faith over flesh. Uh, she said, God bless you. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you so much for sowing tonight. God bless you. Thank you for sowing through Cash App. I'm going to go ahead and see here. Uh you know, those of you who are donating, whether through Cash App, whether through Venmo, whether through PayPal, I want to say thank you guys for supporting what we're doing. Uh, we have a lot of exciting stuff coming. Like I said, I, I've i not been given permission to fully release what we're doing yet, but we will very, very soon. And I want to thank you guys for sowing because God is doing some amazing things. God is about to blow up some amazing things. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. I miss you guys. I'm sorry I've been gone for three weeks. A lot, a lot, a lot of transition has happened in the last three weeks. So uh, I've not been able to uh, <laughs> get on here and, and, and do the streams as much as I've wanted to. But this month, we're going to be doing a, a lot more consistently. Um, I got a whole lineup of guest speakers coming. And I also have a lineup for August. In the month of August, we're going to be doing a series of prophets. We're going to bring the prophets on um, in here so that we can uh, see, you know, hear what they we're, we're going to learn from the prophetic. We're going to have a uh, prophet William on again. He's going to talk about his recent encounter in heaven. Uh, I'm going to have another prophetic voice come in here and activate you guys in the prophetic. That's going to be super fun. They're going to come in here. I'm going to hop you guys in. They're just going to start prophesying at you guys. Uh, so we're, we're, we're working on a new way that we're going to do the glory podcast. Going forward, we're going to just jump in. Uh, we're going to do the teachings, and then we're going to, in the end, you know, uh, do a mass prayer. Then we're going to have you guys come in live just like you saw. You know, it'll be limited, unfortunately. Uh, so that's why you guys want to stay in the stream and be ready for whenever that time comes for us to be able to hop you in there, uh, get direct ministry. And, guys, God's going to just do some amazing things. So, yeah, new levels, new levels. Come on, Andrew. That's right. Yep. So, guys, amazing stuff is coming up, too. By the way, um, I'm going to be uploading a vlog soon of a revival trip that we did to Houston where an entire family got delivered. So that video is currently being edited. Once it's done, stay tuned for it. It's going to be a two-part video. We're going to see uh, some amazing stuff. We've had people getting healed. Uh, we had deaf ears pop open. We, we have all that stuff on camera. It's going to be really, really cool when we upload that. Andrew said, there's an angel in my room. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Give him more <laughs> in Jesus' name. Well, guys, thank you for tuning in tonight. Um, that's it for tonight for the Glory Podcast. No after party, unfortunately. Uh, we will probably do an after party next week, so stay tuned for that, guys. I love you. Thank you so much, guys, for watching tonight. Thank you for sewing tonight. Thank you to all who gave. Um, we love you. We thank you for your support. If you guys want to become a monthly partner, that links are in the description for that as well. Other than that, guys, stay tuned. I'm going to be uploading information very soon about the next episode. Hopefully you are all blessed. Go out there and be bold for Jesus in Jesus name. Thank you so much for watching this video. Hopefully it blessed you. It impacted you and touched your life. Uh, if you're new to this channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you get notified with some of our future videos. Every Friday night, we have something called the Glory Podcast, where we invite those who are walking in the realms of the glory, and we dig and ask questions about what it looks like to live in the glory, to walk in the glory, and to be in the glory and release the glory into a generation. Here in this channel, we're all about um, pushing forward this glory revival movement that is happening in these last days. We are about raising up a generation of glory revival carriers. We believe that you are one of those glory revival carriers. Join us in this movement of the Holy Spirit uh, to awaken a generation to carrying the glory into the world as we prepare for the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Subscribe and watch some of these other videos suggested to you and
enjoy. God bless you. Thank you for watching.